All right. Well, thanks everyone for being here. I truly do appreciate you taking the time to uh, participate in this this class on trade planning with focus. And one of the things that I've been striving for here lately is really working um, with with members of Hit and Run Candlesticks and Right Way Options, working with them to show a better way. Of, of trading to become more mechanical in your trading and what that really means. Now, one of the things I talk about a lot is, is how important it is to hold on to an edge. And we've been talking about one specific setup. We've been calling it the 3-8 trap, and I'll show you what that means here in just a second. But the whole idea behind this is to create a very mechanical system, something very simple, easy to follow, that we stay dedicated to a set of rules and that we uh, focus in on a plan. And that's the purpose of this today. So if, if you have a notebook, if you have a pen, pencil, whatever, highly recommend you take some time to write some notes on this because if you take a class like this, which is really just nothing more than a, um, a coaching session that I would work with someone that doesn't have a plan, um, take some notes on this. If you don't follow through on this, you forget it, you don't do it, you give lip service to it, and then your trading doesn't improve. And what I really wanted to do by um, spending so much time as I, as I have on this strategy is to help everyone do a better job with their trading and really focus in on those important things. And the great thing, the great news is, it is working for people and folks are making some consistent money using this strategy. So first, let's jump into a, a chart here. And if we're taking a look um, at, at a simple set of indicators, the first thing I want to do is I want to remove price action. I want to remove the price on the chart and I want to look at the setup here. Now what I've got right now is a three exponential moving average and an eight exponential moving average on the chart. <clears throat> I don't want anyone thinking this is the only two averages, and if you wanna use three or whatever, that's fine as well, that this is the only indicator um, out there that you need. If, obviously for the three eight trap, it's a three exponential versus the eight exponential, but it really doesn't matter if you switch this up with different uh, different moving averages, it will work just the same. You know, if we take an old chart like um, shop that is certainly pulling back now, and we look at these patterns and signals in here on the way up on that daily chart, if I were to remove the three exponential moving average and maybe use the eight against the 17 exponential moving average, notice that we still get these same kinds of patterns, just a little bit longer exposure in the trade. Okay, so it all depends on what you, what time frame you want to trade and how you want to handle it, what moving averages that you use. But what I want to, what I want to express very clearly here, is that it's not the moving averages, and it's not there. There's no magic in these moving averages. Okay, the the magic comes in following that price pattern and having a plan to take advantage of that price pattern. So if I were to go back here and, and put that eight exponential moving average, and I'm just gonna flip through, whoops, uh, three back on, and I and I just wanna flip through a few charts. Does it look like, if, if you go through a list of charts, just these two indicators, do you guys see an opportunity where you could make money with this indicator? Where we could look for entries, exits, shorts, longs in this chart. I think they're pretty obvious. Now, let me explain the pattern that I'm looking for here that creates the 3A trap. A lot of people want to look and, and they want to scan for, because it's easy to scan for, they want to scan for a moving average crossing over. 
three crossing over the eight. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's what we're, and everybody is chasing that trade when they do that. I don't want to be looking. It's not the crossover that matters. The crossover is not the trade. The trade that I look for, the rules that I follow in this, is I want to see that crossover occur. I'm not going to worry about any of the price action in here. I'm not even going to try to trade it. I'm going to wait for this pullback where we get that proof that we're going to hold that eight exponential moving averages support. This is the trade I'm interested in. And the reason, let me explain why that is the case. If I chase this move up over here, notice to get my stop loss down here, I'm taking a pretty sizable risk in the trade. If I let that stock move up and pull back and hold above the 8, show me those buy signals in here, I take a very low risk trade to my stop loss. That's why I do that. I want low risk trades. I want high probability trades. Trades that are showing me that they are holding support. I'm not interested in the trade that moves up very sharply that could just real quickly reverse. Hasn't proved any support in the chart, okay? So that's what I'm looking for for a long. I wanna see that move up. I wanna see that hold of support. And then I'm looking for those entry signals into that trade. Okay, now if I'm looking at a short position, I'm gonna be just the opposite. I wanna see that failure rally back to resistance and failure for any short. I don't wanna see that cross over and break back down. It's not the crossover trade. So I wanna see those failure patterns that rally back underneath the eight where we fail to hold, where I mean, where we confirm that that eight is going to put a lid on the stock. And then I'm looking for that short trade to the downside, okay? Once again, it doesn't matter what two moving averages that you use for this, but it's about getting mechanical in this trade. So can everyone here kind of agree that those are two setups? If we go through and look at a few stocks, those are two setups that repeat themselves over and over and over. There's entries into the long side of this trade. There's short trades into the short side of this trade that set themselves up, okay? Now the other thing is as we look at some of these charts, Okay, is I want you to think about the time frame that you trade. Okay, there's a lot of folks out there that confuse time frames and they tie too many different time frames together. Well, I have to look at a 15 minute and I have to look at an hourly and I have to look at a daily and I'm trying to confirm an entry signal amongst all that data. And what happens is normally people are frozen because there's too many contradictions in that trade. Okay, so if you're going to follow a, a plan like this, then make sure that you go through a bunch of charts with just these two averages on there and look at the price action of, of these um, averages and see, could have, I, could have I just followed this and made money? Whether it be a daily chart whether it be a four hour chart, whether it be an hourly, a 15 minute, a five minute, it doesn't matter. Follow that same pattern over and over and over and make those trades. Okay, just following a very strict plan. So I'm gonna ask you guys this question. For me, you can choose to do something different if I'm looking at this four hour chart, would this be a trade right here? The answer is no. It's no because I don't get right there's where I got the crossover. I'm not trading the crossover. I'm not interested in the crossover. The trade I'm looking for occurs right here. And it occurs right here. Those are the trades that I'm looking for. So I'm being very picky about the trades 
And whatever time frame it is that you decide that you want to trade, I want you to look at enough charts to confirm to yourself that this actually works. Okay. Why would you want to put together a plan if you haven't confirmed that, hey, I could make money doing that? Okay. You can go through as many charts as you want until you get that confirmation that by golly, I can do this and I can make money with this and I can do this over and over and over and I can find trades that produce good quality trade signals where there's no no conflict, there's no contradiction to the trade. We see the setup, we follow the trade, we wait for the, in, the next um, entry into a position and we just keep trading. Okay. Now, the other thing that I think is really, really important as you're doing that confirmation process, does this work? Is you need to remember the importance of a trend. Okay. If a stock has been moving down and then suddenly moves up, is that the beginning of the trend? In my eyes, that is not the beginning of the trend. Okay, the beginning of the trend occurs when we get that first lower high and then buyers step in. That begins the trend and not until then do we have a trend, either up or down. We need that confirmation of either support or resistance to prove the trend. Okay, so we want to make sure that we're looking at stocks that have trend. So we're at least making a higher low, okay, to show us that trend. You can have stocks coming clear up out of a bottom, like 3M, but confirm that higher trend here. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't pick stocks coming up out of a bottom, but you want that confirmation of that higher low. Okay, there's that higher low that we're looking for, that confirmation of trend starting to show up. Okay. Now the entry signals, once you've confirmed that, hey, you've gone through enough charts, this pattern actually works, and you can see it, that is the beginning of setting up a plan. If you remember the, the screen that I used, the... Um, screen that I used here to for the for this setup is first does it work yes and now we move on to making money okay if it if you find that that doesn't work for you you need to change from that very basic setup you need to change until you find something that does work for you that fits you okay now I've had people look at this and say this is so simplistic there's no way this can work. There's no way over time this can work. And that's why you have to go through and look at the price patterns, because I think what you're going to find, you're going to prove to yourself that it does work. If I just settle down and follow the signals rather than trying to predict, rather than chasing, rather than having an emotional reaction to what's going on in the market for the day, if I just simply follow that simple plan, I'm going to win more often than not. A great example is a person that I've been working with personally in coaching that has started using this on a four hour chart and just reported to me 20 winning trades, or excuse me, 20, out of 20 trades, 18 were winners, two were losers on a four hour chart just following this pattern. Okay, now that kind of win-loss ratio, it's impossible not to make money in the market. And we're going to talk about this entire strategy and how I would go about building that strategy from this point. So first off, confirm that you see this pattern and that this pattern would work for you and you could set up potential trades with this pattern. 
Okay, now we have an added price action in on this chart. And I want to tell you this very clearly, write this down. Besides writing down, write down this statement. It's not the moving average crossover that's the trade. We're not trading a moving average crossover. We're trading a proof of support in the trade, a confirmation of trend or a continuation of trend. The next thing to write down on here is that we're not going to predict when that trade setup occurs. We're going to wait for it to occur. We're not going to predict it. We want to see proof that either buyers or sellers are confirming what we see in the chart before we enter that trade. Second, we're never going, or the next rule, we are never going to enter a trade until we have planned the position. Until we know how much money we have at risk in this trade and the plan that we've put together on the position. Okay, We are not going to take a trade until we know the details of the trade. Next rule. We must have a planned exit for profits. We have to have some kind of idea what our trade goal is. Does it mean that you have to automatically just take off a small win, but you need to get comfortable with the idea of banking profits? Okay. So that has to be important in the trade. All right. Now the next thing, the next rule is the trade does not occur just by the moving averages. In fact, the moving averages have nothing to do with the actual entry of the trade. The moving averages get us into the neighborhood of a trade. And then we look at the price action. The price action is what creates the entry, not the moving averages. Okay, we trade price action signals. That's what we're looking for. The moving averages just help us identify when those trades are occurring. Okay, does that make sense, guys? So let's talk about how we go about setting up a trade. I'm gonna turn the price action on in this trade, in this chart, and let's look at this chart. Now, this, this trade right here gapped away. See how that gapped away? So this to me on that gap away probably would be a trade I would have passed on. Beautiful setup, but it gapped away and it gave me a higher risk entry on the trade. My stop loss needs to be below this price support here. You can see the bottom of that candle right there. My stop loss has to be below that. That's where price support was confirmed. Okay. So if I'm going to try to enter this trade, I want to enter this trade and I want to look at this price pullback and say, hey, if I see this coming, I'm going to place a price alert maybe across here. And if I can get this trade and the risk of this trade is acceptable, that's the trade I want. But if it gaps way beyond here and I don't see this till sometime in here, I'm probably not going to accept this trade because of the higher risk to my stop loss. My stop still has to be at the same place. That's where support was recorded. Okay, so I, I don't wanna take that kind of risk in a trade. I'll just wait for the next entry into the position because this, this trade setup, we don't have to be chasing we don't want to be chasing. We want to be waiting for that next entry into the trade. Okay, so let me give you an example of a trade setup. Now, you guys know that this was a trade setup that we talked about just the other day. We identified this trade just as this was popping, just as this was coming up. We looked at this trade, looked at where our stop loss would be, 
and determined that the risk of this trade was acceptable. Entering that trade, before I entered that trade, I calculated out what would be using options, by the way. And by the way, I'm not going to get into the option calculations here today, but just the setup. Um, you'll need to um, go review a video on how to put together the option calculations. But then I took the price of the option where we were buying it, added 15% to it and put a line up here. That was a 15% target. This was a 20% chart target. And I looked at the chart. And I asked myself a question, does it look like that is a reasonable move for the stock to make? Could that be possible? I don't want to look at a stock and maybe take a trade that doesn't look like it has the possibility of even rising up there. Too much congestion or too much resistance or something in the chart. But I didn't see that here. I set those targets out there and that looked pretty reasonable. Now, I didn't know, and no one knows from the beginning of a setup of a trade like this, whether or not it's actually going to work. What I do know from the beginning is that I know how much risk I have in this trade, and if I get stopped out, I'm okay with it. That's something that's really important for everyone's trade plan. You have to understand what your tolerance for risk is. And I usually tell people, a lot of people will say, well, it's a percentage. No, it's not a percentage. A percentage on a $25 stock, a 4% or 3% pullback or something to a stop loss on a $25 stock is way different in cost than a 3% pullback on a $250 stock. So it's not a percentage. We have to figure out what is an acceptable loss, the dollar amount. I don't know about you guys, but when I get my bills, they require dollars. I can't just send them a percentage. So I need to think about how much I'm willing to risk on a trade. So let's say you have a risk tolerance of $250 on this trade. If you calculate from this entry to this exit, that it's more than $250, you must walk away from this trade. You can't trade it. You have to walk away. That's beyond your risk tolerance. You can't take the trade. That's right, Alan. Keep it simple. Keep it very simple. Okay? So that's one of the key elements. If when you first plan, I'm going to enter here, my exit is here, and I can't afford that much risk, walk away from the trade before you ever enter the position. Okay, if you determine this is acceptable risk, then you go that next step and you plan in some targets and see whether or not this chart has an opportunity to pay you that. Now, I've said this several times. In fact, I've done several trades and right in front of the, uh, you guys in, in, in right way options where we planned a 10, 15 and 20% profit on trades, both a long and a short. Can you go broke taking a 10% profit? Yeah, never, right? <clears throat> You're not going to go broke. When we take a look at our win-loss ratio, and this is something people don't think about a lot. I talk a lot about this during my um, coaching sessions with individuals when I'm doing that, is we forget our win-loss ratio all the time. OK, and we forget that it's really, really important that we continue to tally wins in this column, right? Doesn't matter how big they are, as long as we continue to tally wins and we don't have that many losses on this side. Now, most of you would probably agree when you initially put on a trade. Because you've done the technical analysis, initially the trade is working out but you've never ever thought about taking that consistent profit. Now, I do this with options. You can do this with stock. I do this with options and with an option trade, if I take a single contract trade, just one contract, that's all I can afford on this position, then without question, 
when I reach up here into my goal area, I take the profit. I'm out of the trade. I'm done. Because we've all done this, right? How many of you have had trades that were winning trades, several hundred dollars in trades, as, or wins, as a matter of fact, and turn it into a loser before you close the trade? How much different your account would look like if you just took those consistent wins? Small consistent wins over and over and over. How much different your account would it look at the end of the month? Okay. Does that make sense? That's right. It builds confidence. I had someone in coaching the other day that trades a smaller account. And we were talking about trading, um, talking about trading this strategy. And, and, I, and I said, well, what if you take a $50 profit? And the person said, 50 bucks? Are you kidding? Why would I trade for 50 bucks? Well, this person is trading a rather uh, a smaller account. And I said, okay, trade that $50. Get that $50 win four times next week. $200. At the end of the year, based on their account, this was nearly a 100%. Whoops, I can't write. A 100% improvement in their trading or in, in their account you add up those small consistent wins until suddenly you're doing something really special in your account you're really making a difference now if you can trade multiple contracts Yes, avoid one loss and you have another win for that win column. And that's one of the things that people tend to forget about, that we're not managing our win-loss ratio. I would rather think about this. If this is a $25 win, I would rather put that in my column over here than put that loss over here when I let it go into a $100, $150 loss. Right, Because if I keep stacking up the wins over here on this column, I can't help but make money overall. Okay? So think about that and think about how taking those consistent wins over and over and over makes a difference. Good friend of mine, Mike Peterson, has says this all the time. It's way easier to find 10 stocks to make you $100 than it is to find one that'll make you 1,000. And he knows what he's talking about because his first year as an option trader, he made a 65% return. Stacking up little wins. His average win, by the way, you can watch the video on YouTube. His average win was around 120 bucks. And he just kept doing it over and over and over with a smaller account. Okay, so it does work. Now let's talk about this. Let's say you have a little bit bigger account. You can trade multiple contracts. Put on those three, let's say you put on three contracts here. Stock moves up. You catch that 15 to 20% win, close two of them then trail the third to see if that can go up higher. Okay, just make sure and manage that trade so it doesn't hurt the overall win of the trade. But have that goal in mind. Never put on a trade. This is for your rules. Never put on a trade until you've thought about that goal where that goal is in the trade or on the chart and you can see that there is a reasonable possibility that could move up there or move down to that location. Okay, does that make sense, guys? I'm not saying you have to always take a tiny profit. Okay, but we have to consider that win-loss ratio and be working diligently to put more wins into that column. And I would rather see a whole bunch of small wins 
than always trying to stretch for that great big winning trade that's going to make me rich quick and ending up with a loser in that column. Okay. That makes sense. So think about how you want to put those things together. And that, that work, that thought process should be done prior to ever entering a trade. You know, one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is they give lip service to the idea that they have a plan, but they really don't have a plan. They're really not following a well thought out plan with a set of rules and structures that keep them mechanical rather than emotional. Okay. What if this was a stock, maybe a stock, maybe you just love Facebook. You think Facebook is the greatest thing since sliced bread. You just love Facebook. And you have an emotional attachment there. Well, when you look at this trade right here, do you see a trade set up yet? Do you see that entry signal that says, I can take this trade? No. And we have to respect that rule and say, look, I'm going to follow my set of rules. This is what I follow. This is what I do. And I repeat this pattern over and over and over because I've proven to myself by looking through a lot of charts that this pattern works if I'm just patient and wait for it. Okay. So you may look at Facebook here and say, hey, I think... This could, if this holds in here, this could set up a trade. So how do we manage that? Well, the first thing I want to do, if I look at a trade that I think that has a possibility of setting up, I look in here, rather than chasing the trade after it's already moved, I look in here and say, how can I make this trade come to me? If I look across here and actually set a line across here, would you guys agree if Facebook were to pop up above this line right here that we would have a potential entry signal in that trade? So I'm going to place an alert on the chart and set that alert to make that trade come to me. I'm not going to chase the trade. I'm going to make that trade come to me. I'm going to pay attention to where this trade is. And that, here's the other great thing about setting that price alert is we're being efficient with our time. Do we have to watch this now? Do we have to wait and just, you know, wringing our hands, you know, oh, hurry up. I want this to be a trade. No, we can walk away and do the, our job. And that is to find the next trade. Now we can be patient for this trade to occur. We know this setup is working and the possibility of us entering this trade with a stop loss under here is acceptable. We know that ahead of time. The risk in here would be okay to my stop. And you can look at that trade and say, this is the trade I wanna trade. So we can wait for the trade to come to us because we're following a mechanical plan in that setup okay we don't have to be that emotional person chasing the trade one of the things that i see all the time in trading is we look for that stock that's already way up and then we rush to that trade we're always hurrying rushing into trades that have already moved and we never consider the risk that we're taking when we do that particularly in this market right now where the market just kind of whips up and whips down and whips up and whips down. If we get that emotional response and we rush into a trade that's already moved, there's a high probability it's just going to turn down and trigger our stop and cost us money because we chase the trade rather than waiting for the good quality entry into the trade. Does that make sense, guys? 
so we're waiting for that train to occur. We're waiting for that position to set up. So how do we find these trains that could be setting up? Well, one of the first things you should do is create a qualified watch list. A qualified watch list would be a watch list of stocks that fit your prices that you can afford to trade. There's no point in looking at a stock, even with options for a directional trade, not many people are gonna trade CMG. They can't afford that option. They can't afford that stock. Even though CMG is setting up for a potential short, it's a waste of time for a lot of folks to even look at that chart. Okay, because they can't afford. So why do that? Why waste your time looking at charts that you can't afford to trade? So build a watch list of stocks that fit you personally in price. Okay, then clean up that chart or clean up that list with stocks that are actually trending. The stock is trending. Make sure it stays in the list. If there's no discernible trend, if the stock is whipping all over the place, if it's a mess, kick it to the curb. We no longer need to waste time with stocks like that. We really don't have time for it. We know what our plan is. We know what our setup is. So we're going to throw out anything else that's going to give us a heartburn in this market. Kick it to the curb. Get it, get, get it out of there. Okay. There's no point in looking at stocks that have terrible volume. If your watch list has stocks in it that have, has terrible volume, volume that you would not trade, why have them in your list? I don't care how beautiful the chart pattern is or what it looks like. Kick that out of there because the volume doesn't fit your requirements. Okay, then if you are a daily trader, you're probably going to need a list, you know, a list that's a little bit bigger, maybe 50, 75, 100 stocks in that list that you can repeat and you can just trade over and over and over on that daily chart when they're trending like this you can see here's the here's the move up here's the pull back there's the entry into this trade there's one winner two winners three winners right there in that chart that doesn't count this one here there's a winner here you can just trade it over and over and over okay if you like to short here's the short trade setup Push down, push back up, possible failure in here. There's your short trade setup. So you can trade that same chart over and over and over. Okay. Most of the time, T, if they have a small average true range, I would tend to kick them out unless they really have a good concise price action in the chart, nice trend or something like that. And I'm going to, because I'm an option trader more than anything else, is I'm gonna look at those options and see whether or not there's good open interest in those options, not the volume of an option. I'm looking for the open interest. How many of those contracts are being held? and continue to be held. That's what's going to motivate me to, to find that liquidity in those option contracts, is that open interest. Okay. <clears throat> so we wanna make sure that that watch list makes sense. Now our job with the watch list is to constantly keep it under management. Okay. This is your pool of winning trades. This is the place where you're going to make money. Okay? It's not in the stocks that are popping up today. It's not the flavor of the day on CNBC News. But they happen to profile it in about five different ways with different people. Okay? This is your money machine right here. That watch list. And you have to maintain that watch list. Protect it. 
When a stock fails or, or gets choppy or no longer fits your criteria, throw it out and find another chart. Okay, and we're just going to continue to trade this price pattern. Now, if you trade intraday charts, if you prefer maybe the four hour chart, which is going to give you a lot more trade opportunities, your trade list can be smaller. It doesn't have to be as big because we're going to get more trading opportunities out of the same stock. And the smaller and smaller time frame you go, all we need to do is have a watch list of stocks that are performing. I'll give you a great example. The person I was working with in coaching yesterday, their method at the end of the day, they go through their big watch list. They pull out stocks at the end of the day, 15 or so stocks that are possibly setting up for tomorrow. And those are the stocks that they pay attention to that day. They're managing a small list. That way, they're not missing all the trades, right? If we're always chasing our tail, racing around for everything that's popping up in the market, what happens? We end up doing nothing. We move around real fast. We make lots of activity. But activity does not equal the results. How many of you guys would admit you've done that? I've done that in the past. Where at the end of the day, I'm exhausted. I have raced and raced and raced and raced. I am so mentally worn out because I've been running and running and running and running, hurrying, hurrying, hurrying. And then at the end of the day, the actual results, I got nothing done. I was busy, worked myself to death, and got nothing accomplished. Okay, so we want to limit that list so that we can focus on this price pattern. We don't want to overdo it with charts that are popping and doing everything in the market today. In fact, I want to actively avoid those stocks that are in the news today. Because I've probably already missed the trade. They've gapped up, they're running like crazy. And I'm gonna allow my emotions to get into the way and cause myself a major problem in those trades if I chase into them, okay? So I wanna be diligent to my plan, to my risk, to my tolerance, finding those good entry trades and those good failure trades. And I just want to repeat them over and over and over. Okay. So we want to make sure, and, and, and one more time, I want to repeat, you don't have to use the 3.8. If there's another set of moving averages that fits you better, then by all means, use those other three moving averages or other two moving averages or whatever it is. But I'm gonna ask you one thing. I get this a lot from folks that I work with in trading and their confidence has been destroyed by the market. Anybody in here feel like your confidence has been destroyed? Maybe not right now because we've been teaching this for a while, your confidence is starting to come up, but your confidence gets destroyed in the market from time to time. You go through a bunch of classes and you learn this and learn that and you try to apply that to your trading and then the market hands you, you know, just pounds you back down, right? And your confidence gets destroyed. Yeah, volatile market will do that. So how do we fix that problem? One of the ways we fix that problem is stop trying to be the jack of all trades. Isn't it the truth that we try to be, uh, we, we try to master every single pattern in the market? And in doing so, we actually never get anything done, right? Because we're chasing, oh, well, hey, that's a head and shoulders. Oh, well, look, there's a round of bottom break. Oh, look, over here, there's a J-hook. Oh, look. And we're chasing around, but we're never settling in on anything. Okay. Pick a pattern or two and dedicate yourself to those patterns. 
Okay, don't be chasing around a whole bunch of different signals or entries or we want something simple, something that repeats over and over and over. And if you guys would agree, a trending stock repeats this pattern over and over and over the peak and valley pattern, right? It's the easiest pattern there is in the world. It's the most common pattern in the market. So let's utilize that to our advantage and focus in on a very simple trade pattern and repeat it over and over and over. Instead of trying to master, trying to be the jack of all trades, how about we master one or two? Get really good at one or two. Because if we do that, all of a sudden, we're going to see an improvement in our trading and our confidence is going to start coming up. Okay, because that pattern repeats itself so much, we can repeat that trade over and over and over. It almost becomes boring after a period of time because we're doing the same thing every single time. Over and over and over. Okay. The next thing that causes people to fail a lot is they overanalyze with way too many time frames or too many indicators. Guys, if you want to commit yourself to a plan, you've got to commit yourself to a plan. This is what I'm going to use. I'm not going to add to it. I'm not going to change it. This is what I'm going to use. I've convinced myself by looking at enough charts, if I use this, this will work. Now commit yourself to the plan. Don't overthink it. Don't overanalyze it. Don't tweak it. You guys have all heard that saying before, right? How many of you have gotten caught in that, in that pattern when you originally started trading and you were very simple with what you knew about trading and you had better results than after you gained a whole this knowledge, all these different indicators, your trading got worse and worse and worse as a result. You became more and more and more frozen. I don't know what to do now. Because you've confused yourself with too many things, too complicated, that's right. We're only capable of maintaining so many data points at one time. And we put ourselves into a situation where we really self-destruct our confidence. Because we're trying to carry too many things. Put that baggage down. Get simple. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, say on build, rebuilding your confidence is we have to practice. And I know this sucks. No one wants to have to open up a paper trade account and trade a paper trade account. If you've been a, a live trader for a while, you just want to get your money back, right? Just want to get trading. I want to make some money. Don't tell me I need a paper trade. But it's in that paper trading, following the routine, being mechanical, being structured in what you do, will help you rebuild your confidence. Just like the person I talked to the other day, this month, 20 trades, 18 winners, would your confidence be growing if you did that? Even if that was in your paper trade account, your confidence would begin to grow, right? Hey, I see this pattern. I execute this trade. More often than not, I make money on this. When that confidence gets re-engaged, because we're following a structured plan, we can then step straight over into live trading and just keep doing the same thing we're doing. Continue to execute the same plan over and over and over, and you'll start to see those results grow. Okay? Just following that simple plan. Yeah, Barry's mentioning trade like a robot. That's right. We, we want to eliminate the emotion. We want to eliminate the prediction. We just want to look at charts that are setting up trades and looking for that potential entry into those trades and repeat this pattern over and over 
and over again. That's all we have to do, just over and over and over again. So as long as that stock is trending, we can make money on the trade. Imagine yourself in this trade, putting on a call option in this trade. This position knocking down 15% or 20% in that trade. A few days later, doing it again. A few days later, doing it again. You keep tallying that up and all of a sudden you're going to find your account growing way more than you expected. They may be small individual wins, but you're repeating them with a high consistency. There's not many losers in that column underneath that big L. They're mostly winners tallying up under that big W. And consequently, we're growing our account steadily, doing the job that we're supposed to do. Not trying to be a hero, not trying to predict anything. Just following the chart, the trend, and the setup like a robot mechanically. Okay, how cool is that? What time frame, Matt? Matt's, um, Matt's just saying that he's up 10% um, already today in Starbucks. Matt's trading a daily chart using this strategy. There's the short setup. And he's up 10% so far on the day. How many of those trades do you need over the course of a week to really change your trading life. We don't have to trade everything. What we need to do is set up a plan and trade it. Doesn't matter if you're trading a five minute chart. Doesn't matter if you're trading a weekly chart. We want that dedicated plan that we're staying strict and stringent to with a set of rules and the guidelines that protect us from us. We are our own worst enemy when it comes to trading. Would you guys agree? We are our own worst enemy. We allow our emotion to get in the way of our trading. We're not treating it like a business. We're letting our emotion lead us around. But if we put together this plan with focus on how we're going to do that and then become disciplined in following it. And by the way, guys, you're going to make mistakes. Okay. I've been doing this full time for 14 years. I still make mistakes. Okay. And it's going to cost you money when that occurs. Sometimes you get lucky, but most of the time when you break a rule, when you make a mistake, you get punished for it. Okay, so you have to go back and continuously review yourself and say, am I following my rules? Have I overcomplicated it again? Have I added in a whole bunch of other things to this simplistic plan I had? I added all this other junk and I messed it up again. I tweaked it until I can no longer make any money. But if you keep it simple, you can review those losing trades and say, did I do something wrong here? Did I break my rules? Stop doing that, right? Fix that problem. Become more disciplined. Remember, this is a business. And the business of making money requires extreme discipline if you want to make money. Remember, we're in competition with every other person in the market. And 99% of the people that trade the market, besides the institutions, are not disciplined. They're gambling. They're tossing money out there. They're hoping to get rich quick. That's how we make our money, because they're making mistakes, and we are avoiding those mistakes with a very mechanical plan to, to pull money out of the market. Okay. Losses are going to occur. 
get comfortable with that. It happens. There's no business in the world that doesn't have losses. But we want to, to minimize those by staying disciplined and dedicated to a very simple plan. This doesn't have to be, you write this out in your notebook, guys, this doesn't have to be pages long. It can be very, very simple. Okay, one page of rules and guidelines that you follow, but you follow them strictly, and you'll see improvement in your trading. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna mention here before we close this up is the importance of recording your trades. How do you know you have good enough winners and losers if you don't record what you're doing? It doesn't have to be a big fancy thing. You don't need fancy spreadsheets or anything like that. You can have a notebook. Write down, I bought, Qualcomm, one contract. This is my entry price. And when you close that trade, this is what I got out for. Winner, loser and keep that tally. Those losing trades, you need to go back first on those losing trades and review if you made a mistake. See, we make more money by removing one losing trade than we do trying to tweak or improve a winning trade. And we're going to learn more about ourselves if we review that losing trade. Isn't it true? That losing trade, we don't want to look at again. We don't want to take our time with it because we don't want to admit that we made a mistake or we blew it. Okay? And sometimes you're going to find out, I did everything right. I did absolutely everything right and the market just happened to cut me pretty deep on a trade. That happens. Okay, we can't see everything coming in the market and no one can. All right, but if you followed your rules, if you stay dedicated to it, the next several trades will likely be winners. You'll recover quicker when things like that occur. But if you don't write down your trades, if you don't go back and review your trades, if, you're, if your daily work is not worth reviewing or, or, or recording, you've got a problem. Imagine this, guys. Imagine you work for my trading firm. And I've given you the guidelines to make money in the market. And I come to your desk and I say, let me see what you've done. And you've recorded nothing. How long do you think you're going to be working for me? Yeah, not long, right? If I sit down with you and say, well, let's review why you're having trouble. And I say, where did you enter this trade? And you say, well, somewhere around here. Where was your stop loss? Oh, you know, somewhere around here. You tell me that more than two or three times and I'm going to close the book. And I'm going to give you that signal where I point to the door. You no longer work here. Because you have to follow that set of rules. We have to be that tough on ourselves as a trading. What if I what if I sat down and you are recording your trades, but you just refuse to follow the rules? How long do you think you'd be working for me? You continue to trade emotionally. You continue to predict. Well, I just know I get this all the time and it makes me crazy. And you see it on Facebook everywhere. Oh, this market's just going to rip the cover. Boy, just buy everything. Yeah, that person is probably living in his mother's basement. Because he's lost all of his money. And trying to prove that he's a hotshot. With that kind of statement. And that's no joke, guys. The people that you see that are the biggest blowhards out there on social media, they are losing money. So they're hemorrhaging so bad. 
because they're always in prediction mode, trying to prove to everyone that they are the man. Okay, so you've got to follow those rules in those trades. You've got to stay strict and diligent to those trades, dedicated to your plan. Okay, now after you practice, if you practice, and by the way, when I say practice, I don't mean go into the market, go into your paper trade and trade one trade and then sit and watch it for a whole week and decide whether or not you've got this figured out. Don't do that. I told one of my coaching clients the other day that trades hourly, wants to use this strategy on hourly. He said, I don't care if you make money in your paper trade account. What I want you to do is find the trades, the right trade, execute those trades, practice the layout, set those trades up and go. Trade. That person traded 16 trades in one day. 16 trades in one day on an hourly chart. Do you think she's going to be more capable of trading after going through that many trades and seeing the results of that many trades? Do you think that person is going to be more capable and more confident as a trader when those results start to roll in? Or that person that trades one trade and sits back and says, well, this doesn't work out. I don't make any money. It requires work. You got to work at it. Okay. So don't get in there and say, well, I'm going to trade one or two trades and see if this works. Well, just pack it up and go home because you're, you're done already. You've already made your decision that you're not going to be in this business. It's paper money, guys. Don't worry about losing money. Get in there and initiate the trades. Make sure when you go back and review those trades that, yep, I entered it right. I planned the trade right. This trade, hey, by the way, this trade worked. Because if you're doing what I'm telling you to do, is you're locking in some profits, right? Stock moves up 15, 20%. Take the profit. And I'm talking about options here. Take the profit. Next trade. Because trust me on this, if you do that enough times, you're going to make money. I have 100% confidence that you'll make money if you follow those rules and just keep executing. Because the pattern works. Does that make sense, guys? So get in there and practice. Get the experience in that paper money. Or it doesn't cost you anything where you get used to doing it so you can exercise ex, I mean execute these trades half in your sleep once you start going live because hey I've done this so many times it's easy make sense so guys I want to challenge you today if you are struggling as a trader if you're still struggling as a trader I want to challenge you today to start do, making the changes today to turn that around. See, no one can do it for you. I can stand here and preach all day. I can give you these ideas all day. But until you initiate the action that you follow through, that you make the, the difficult decisions, this is how I'm going to trade. This is my plan. Until you make those steps, it will not change. So how bad do you want it? Are you willing to start doing that today? Are you willing to start fixing that problem? It doesn't have to be the 3-8 trap. It doesn't have to be the 3-8 trap. It can be any setup you want, but are you going to get dedicated to it and have a good solid plan that you can prove and commit to.
Okay. So thank you, everyone. I really appreciate you um, being here. I really appreciate you participating um, in this class. I hope you've got some use out of it. I honestly, the, the, the greatest thing to me in the world is when I get the opportunity to work with someone and that aha moment comes when they go, wow, I understand now. This is what's been going on. This is how I fix this. I hope some of you had that aha moment. I hope some of you say, I'm going to start today to change my trading life. Because I truly believe if you commit yourself to a plan that has focus and dedication in it, you will change your trading life. The act of trading itself is extremely easy. The process of doing it successfully because we're humans, we make mistakes, we're emotional, is very difficult. So you have to have a plan to protect yourself. Okay? Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Have a great afternoon. You guys are awesome. I appreciate you so much for participating and I hope you all got something out of this today. Everyone take care. We'll talk to you all very, very soon. Have a good one.